Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming, you guys. We're going to start a feed of the tour of Bombay Beach with Daniela Artizoni, who does uh, a great Venice Art Crawl event called uh, Dogtown Artist United. She's had many parties over the years, and uh, I'm sure many of you have been there. It's a real fun burner event. And um, it showed a lot. We she had a lot of events in the beginning of the art crawl, and then we went to Burning Man. Well, I went to Burning Man and discovered Burning Man, and we brought the Venice Afterburn to Venice. Daniela was key in making that happen, and uh, she's just incredible. So she and Andy gave us a tour of an area near the Salton Sea called Bombay Beach. And there's all kinds of art out there at Bombay Beach. And uh, I'm gonna start this video because uh, there's no way to show you live at night, but she taped this for us. And um, come discover Bombay Beach with the Venice Afterburn and the Venice Art Crawl. Here we go. Hi, this is Daniela and this is Andy and we're uh, part of the Dogtown Artists United that produce the Venice Afterburn and today we're going to take you through a tour of Bombay Beach that has become an artist hub in the last uh, three or four years. In fact, a lot of Venice Beach artists um, have moved uh, out in the desert and bought property, empty lots here, so they could store their art, some of which has been at Burning Man. This is called the estates and there are, when the event is happening here, there's like a lot of, uh, this is the party town basically, the party scene. And there's some random art installations. Okay, let's go left. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Andy to see it. And this is it. If you guys understand what it is, I'll get closer. Park place. This is the Monopoly house. How cute. All right, let's keep going. We're a little bit further uh, inside town, further away from the Salton Sea. And this is a installation by Randy Palombo. It was a Burning Man and Coachella. Um, usually when the Bombay Beach uh, kind of opening happens, you can actually climb all the way on the top and you can see the whole town. And this is just sits here after being at Burning Man and Coachella, now this one has found his permanent home in Bombay Beach. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and pretty much every day you'll see people, Instagram models, all right, let's move on to another really cool installation by Randy Palombo. Here at the, just a couple blocks down from that airplane, upside down airplane that we just saw, it's another installation by um, Randy Palombo and it's called Angler Grove. This is one of my favorites in Bombay Beach. It's a little tiny house. Look how cool. And this looks like uh, cement, but it's really just foam. So this is the Angler Grove house. And this tree, this majestic tree is a big part of this. So in Bombay Beach, it is customary 
in Bobby Beach is if it's customary that if you have a TV and you don't know where to throw it out because there is a trash problem, uh, this is where you bring it. But you have to spray paint it first. Okay, we're on uh, Avenue E. The streets in Bombay Beach are called by letter and numbers, just like Burning Man. That's why I like it. Uh, on Avenue E, we have the drive-in theater, which is really cool, and I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Okay, the drive-in theater. And it's a really drive-in theater, so to speak, because you cannot drive your car in. There's already cars that you can just sit in if you find one that is clean enough. And there's a screen. And they actually do real screenings here. A couple of weeks ago, there was a big uh, noise and we came over and this car had burned down just right in front of the drive-in theater. And the guys just left it there here, I guess, for Maybe you can be the next uh, car inhabiting the driving theater. Let's move on and let's go see the next installation. There's a little cute tree house over there. Hey, we're approaching a big um, artist, a big artist center with another art installation. We hope it's to be an airplane. Usually it spins with the wind. And then in the background, you can actually see um, Caro Caro's mural. There's no one here right now because all the artists are kind of avoiding coming in town, uh, just trying to stay, follow the stay at home um, order for COVID-19. But in the back there, you can see another building
months ago it went all the way to where Andy's at and now you can see and it, it rained one day out of uh, about 350 days and this is pretty much it for our short tour of Bombay Beach but I want to let uh, people know that we have an empty lot that is available for art for sculptures freestanding sculptures or installations it has power and uh, it would be great for some uh, drive-by art uh, for the people that come through town to see so if anybody's interested uh, please reach out to Dogtown Artists United um, lastly, I'm going to show you what uh, Andy and I have been working at. So this is our project, the tile house. We're tiling everything, inside and outside, walls. Uh, it's a work in progress. Thank you, Venice Art Crop. We love you. Well, that was awesome. Yeah, Amy. We'll hook you up with Daniela. You should go out there and tile. And uh, that's pretty awesome, don't you think? Um, I want to show you another video, uh, if I can get it up. It's of an artist named Loser Angelus. And uh, I just have to try to figure out where I put that. Oh, in the meanwhile... Hi everyone, this is Monica Starling, and I'm super excited to be here tonight for the Venice Art Crawl. And of course, we all wish we could have done it in person, but it's not possible right now. But it's possible online, so here I am. A little bit about me, I'm a DJ, singer, songwriter, I'm also an artist. Um, I love oils, and I do a lot of digital art as well. So I'll be playing one of my favorite mixes that I've made. Uh, it's a blend of new disco, pop, dance, a little bit of everything. So I'll have it on tonight for you guys to... Oops, sorry people. Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. This is, comes in three parts. And uh, let's see. Uh, we're having a little bit of a technical glitch. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get her to go. Come on, Monica. Yeah, it might be a little bit. Ah, uh, not so easy, but you know what? Um, we can see this video on our Instagram stories because she uploaded it today and uh, it should be sitting in there. It might not have downloaded onto my uh, feed. Loser Angelus too has a great uh, video that he made, but I don't know that I have it. So you might have to watch it on our Instagram feed and check out Loser. Oh, here's Frank. This is um, Fathom Gallery. It's on Wilshire. And uh, he has three artists that we're going to feature right now. Let's see. Frank? Hello, and welcome to Fathom. Thank you. T tell me what you're up to. Well, we're, we're printing today, oh. and we're going to show you a few of the artists we work with who have done some pieces about love. Oh, cool. Right? Um, we, we actually work with close to 70 artists and photographers, a combination. Um, and primarily we publish these artists, but we do have a handful of artists that hire us to uh, print or capture uh, their paintings for them. Um, it's split about 50-50 photographers and painters and about 50-50 women and men, male artists. So um, we're you know, trying to do that balance. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have to really project through two masks. Oh, okay, you know, I'm not reading? Yeah, not too bad. Do you wanna take a look at some of the art? That, yeah, who do we have here? So this is uh, for Quasso, Michael Bay. Uh, you would take two. 
Yeah, we'll just go. Uh, 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 Michael De Nicola, his middle name is Torquato, and he created this little formed character as Torquato, who's, who's uh, saying is, yes, I can. <laughs> That's great. Right? And this whole series is called Love Is, and it's based on um, a collection of images that he created um, surrounding the cartoon Love Is, that, right? And he used to keep these out with his grandmother, and his grandmother would send them to his friends and the family. So he's, every year he's created a series. It's been an ongoing series called Love Is. And a few years ago, we did a show with him called Torquato Says Love More, was the, was the premise of the show. So this is a um, pigment print based on one of his original paintings. And it's called I See You. Pigment print. Uh, no, these are all archival prints. Right, archival 12 color prints. And on this particular series, Mike went in and remarked each one. So each one is slightly different in terms of the characters he wrote on it. Um, this what do is, they mean? I don't know. <laughs> all right. I think they're just, you know, symbology of, of what his sort of lexicon, like some of these, you know, he creates little characters and... So. and they're all embedded into the piece. Right. So you print on it, is he is he doing anything on top of them or are these originals? These, these are not... In these the are hands. prints. These are just prints on 100% watercolor paper. Um, Michael's background is he's a pro surfer or was a you know act, active mm. pro surfer. So he's got this kind of unique blend of, I almost call it like West Coast neoconservatism. It's kind of this primitive style. Um, but, the, you know, it's, the colors are sort of happier and brighter than what you might see coming out of the New York school, yeah. right? Um, cool. What else do we have? So then this is Miles Regis. And Miles is also in that sort of neo-expressionist category of work. Um, we're doing a series of prints with him called America the Series, and it's Miles's take on what it's like living day to day here in America. And you know, he's 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 influenced by Basquiat, um, but he's got a, his work comes from more of a humanistic, um, sort of all inclusive. It comes from love, even though a lot of the imagery is political. Um, there's always this um, sort of upside to it, or most often, you know. Um, so th this is Miles Regis, Love Wins. This is our newest piece from Miles. Great, and can people get this print from you? It's available on the website. What's your website? Fathom, F-A-T-H-O-M hyphen A-R-T dot com. Okay. Fathom Art. And that's Miles Regis. This is Miles Regis. And this is a new series we're doing with one of the original LA graffiti artists from K2S. This is Carlos Marquez, and, and these are, again, a series of love graffiti. Um, and a lot of times he'll have some of his original, you know, graffiti writers sit in with him and they'll hit a canvas, and then we'll photograph it. And this particular series, we're just testing how it looks on canvas. So this would be a stretch canvas, and this would be the border here. And I think that we're probably going to have Carlos come back in and enhance each one with spray paint. So each one will be a hand painted multiple. Um, so you know we'll be we'll be releasing these a little bit later in the year in the spring. But a whole series of graffiti. And you know one of the things that's I think important to note about this kind of work, you know this is authentic. It's not someone who went to art school and is doing graffiti. These are the K2S guys are guys that, you know, original graffiti artists in Los Angeles. And there's probably a group of maybe 40 or 50 people who really created the LA style of graffiti between the different crews, like K2S, and WCA, and all those guys. And who's this back here? That's our boy Roatash. Tell us about Ro. Uh, Ro I think most of us know Ro in Venice. Yeah, Roy Tosh was a Venice artist until he decamped for Austin, Texas, where he's a professor of advertising now. And uh, this is an early piece called Here Comes Old Flat Top, um, which, by the way, I named. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Roy Tosh has, you know, it's, he's a comic artist, and 
all of his pieces have his sort of sense of humor embedded in them somewhere. Do we have others? Other Is that than, his? Uh, that's his too. That's from his midnight sketchbooks, um, which he did during COVID. And we have a whole series of pieces he did. Every midnight he would do a new sketch. Do you have any here? Uh, no, not really. It's oh. not printed. We're, we're going to be releasing it as a book. You have art everywhere here. Yeah, there's some more Miles Who's Venus that? originals. We keep it real. He keeps it real. And where is Miles from? Miles is a tr was born in Trinidad, and he you know came to the United States for college and to pursue. Is this one his? That's him too. Get it? Mm -hmm. What else do you have? From Miles. Yeah. Oh, well, who's this? Who did this beautiful? So, so that's print? that's Richard Aaron, Prince photo. It's actually her best-selling rock and roll photo. Oh. Prince number nine from the role. Um, Richard was a stringer for Rolling Stone and a lot of the major um, publications, and he shot rock and roll for probably 40 years. He has a massive archive of amazing rock and roll photography. Should we keep going down and take a look? Sure. Just project. Okay. <laughs> Got stuff going on everywhere. This is nice. Who's this? So that work is by Stefan Johansson, who is a, was a Formula One race car driver, and he's still involved in Formula One. And he did a series named after famous turns on the Formula One circuit. And he used, you know, the color palette of the turn and tried to give people a view of what it's like driving a Formula One race car. And he raced for Ferrari and McLaren, and he actually won Le Mans, so major dude. Wow. It just all is a blur. And these? This is more Carlos Marquez work that uh, we wholesale to furniture stores around the country. Um, it's a, sort of a throwback mid-century, but a lot of his work, because he's a graffiti writer, it's based on letter forms and strokes. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Then these are from Marcel Blanco, AKA Cell, who is a street artist who originally started with WCA and uh, was, I think, Risk's first uh, painting partner when they were in high school, they met. Um, and so they've been doing graffiti together for years. And this is a show that um, is called Punk Rock Zen. That was the last show we ever scheduled before COVID. And we never had the proper opening uh, to really put the show together. But what's interesting about these pieces is they're all somewhat biographical in that they're different aspects of Cell's personality. So it's a really deeply personnel, you know, personal project. This one is not him too. They have beautiful palette, color palettes. They're great. Yeah, you know the graffiti writers have a whole different view of color. Mm -hmm. Wow. How long have you had a gallery? Uh, we opened the gallery in 2015 in downtown LA. So, and then you know, right now it's not a gallery. Right now it's a part storehouse and part print facility. Um, but we're hoping that as things open up, we'll be able to reopen the gallery and move the print studio to a new location. Well, um, so there are painters out there that haven't actually ever printed their work. They've just painted and they have originals. What's the benefit of having prints? How does that... Um, you know, make their work more valuable or less valuable? What's your Yeah, I mean, take you know, I, for me, obviously, people have different opinions, you know. Um, I feel like if you have a robust print program, it gives you the courage to keep your originals priced at a, at a point where you make money because, you know, obviously, it takes a lot of time and energy to make a painting. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of painters, they'll feel the pressure of the marketplace and start selling the paintings cheaper. Some galleries, there's a few here in town that 
will always be pushing the price down because they want to flip and turn the inventory. If you have a good print program, it does two things. One, it allows, it gives you cash flow so you can afford to keep your originals high, right? And then secondly, it opens up your market because, you know, if you're, if you're selling $10,000 originals, there's a whole group of consumers who will never be able to afford your work or put it in their house. So this gives, you know, depending on how you structure your print program, a lot more people have the ability to own your work and display it in their home or their workplace. And uh, some people are printing their work at Costco or, you know, their local print place. Yeah. What's, how, how do you determine where to print? Well, I mean, obviously I'm biased, you know, but I think the reality is any print starts with a good file and the digital capture. And that's really, I think, the secret sauce of what makes our work stand out compared to, you know, Joe Blow or Costco. It, or Suzy Q or whoever is yeah. that uh, we've gotten over the years really good at capturing the art and capturing the um, texture and what's in the print compared to if you go to Costco or if you try to shoot it at home with your iPhone or even you know your camera it's, it's tricky like you know we we, pull, we use cross polarization when we photograph the art so we can deal with reflections and we we do somewhat as asymmetrical lighting so we can cast the shadows in a way that helps show what was painted. You know, and, I, and then, you know, secondly, there's a little bit of an art to it because the print is not a painting. And so sometimes on a print, we'll give it a little more pop or a little more contrast just to um, just make it feel right on paper. Right. right, and then the second thing about working with a shop like ours as opposed to um, Costco or you know maybe even some other commercial labs is we have 24 different substrates that you can print on, so you have a lot more options in terms of how you want that print to show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a marketing thing. And who's this? This is another Turquoise. Let's take a look at that. Love is something he... Yeah, love, love is his thing. This is the over here. We're, we're doing a series for resale into home decor, and we're just kind of exploring some, you know, somewhat expressionistic views of things like chandeliers and, they, you know, home decor objects. And this is Sherry Alec, a new artist to fathom. And that's her too? This is her too. These are original charcoal. And we're reproducing them. Wow, beautiful. So you have a lot. Of, how, if people want to reach you and they feel like they want to get some of their work printed or they're looking for representation, how can they reach you? So, you know, you can get to us through the website. Uh, there's a, you know, contact form to, you know, if, if you want to have us look at art for representation, you know, make sure you send us a link. Don't blow up our, our you know, thing with a bunch of JPEGs. Send us a link either to your Instagram account or to, if you have a website, or to somewhere where we can look at the art. But don't send us anything we have to download, you know. Um, in terms of, um, like, print for pay, people want to come in and print with us, it's really by referral only. We're, we're a small shop and we spend a lot of time on each piece, you know, I, I really try to each, treat each piece as if I were publishing it. So anyone who comes in, you know, gets that kind of attention to detail as if it were going to a museum or, or to, a, to an A-list art gallery. We, we do everything we can to make it look the way the artist wants it to look. Well, great. Thank you so much for showing us what you do. And we'll see you at the next art crawl, hopefully in person. Okay. Right, Sounds thanks. good. Wow, that was great. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was with Frank um, Coiro at Fathom Gallery. Um, I feel like I have another video to show if anybody wants to see it. I just have to try to find it. So hang in there and uh, let's see if I can find it. 
talk amongst yourselves. Oh, somebody who wants to talk for a little bit. What do you think? Uh, let me invite uh, Holly. Holly, do you want to go on? Let's see. Or let's see if Holly comes on. We can talk about the art crawl and how we want to get more people involved. And uh, let's see. Okay, let's see who's going to show. Yeehaw. No, no, Holly. Okay, let's see. Uh, who else wants to come on? Anyone? Anyone? Holly? April? Yeah, let's go, Holly. Let's see if Holly will come on now. Ooh, that's Pinky Bach. <laughs> Can you hear her? Let's see. Yeah, basically, Holly and I were talking earlier. Oh, there you are, Holly. Hi. <laughs> it's nighttime. It is. It's nighttime. And of course, I literally just washed my face and I'm getting ready for bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. It's a, it's a late one. You're, I guess you won't be up for the after party. I, uh, well, I might be, but, you know, I was just watching. Uh, you can it. put it, yeah, you can just I listen. Think I was all camera ready until five seconds ago. Well, you <laughs> look gorgeous. I heard you go, Holly, 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 let's Holly, Holly. Holly. Um, oh, my God, Holly, this has been such a fun art crawl. What a fun art crawl. It was so interesting. We just had people all over the spectrum, and that's what Venice art is all about. It's just you know, know, such a diversity of people and artists and mediums. And it was, it was great. And I'm like, I'm so thrilled to have joined tonight and thrilled to be a part of the art crawl. Me and, too. There were, yeah. and there were other people that uh, sent us videos and tours of their stuff. I, I wanted to show loser, but I can't find his video. I should have had it queued up. I'm a, uh, it was, it's too bad, but, um, yeah, I know. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll show it another time. You know, loser, I think we'll definitely want to join again. Yeah. He is fantastic. His video was hysterical. He literally ran through his whole <laughs> studio and showed us his toilet and his refrigerator versus his artwork. But I know, you know. that was really funny. But, <laughs> but so the artwork that you saw as it was going by was great. And Amazing. he's going to have a show. He's going to have a show like in person. By. <laughs> yeah. He's having a show in person. Did you hear about that? Um, on March 23rd. And the studio is huge. It's in downtown LA. So... Yeah, I don't know how you get an invitation to be there, but I'll put the the video of his studio on um, Instagram. Yeah, yeah listen and... on Instagram with the along with the show details, and same with Michael and Patrick. Thanks. I see yes, and their show. You guys did amazing tonight. You are oh so entertaining. God. I'm so <laughs> thrilled to hear that you have your own show now, Michael and Patrick, because it's, I'm definitely in. You're always a highlight of our art crawls. You really are. We You're love hysterical, you guys. and it just gets more hysterical with every cocktail that you have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everybody needs to drink a lot more. Not saying cocktails to be hysterical, but I'm just no, saying. <laughs> but they're really fun to drink with. I'm yeah, sure. they are. I can't remember. But anyway, <laughs> it was fun. Well, we'll um, definitely promote their show as well, because they also have a show. Yeah, totally. Uh, in addition to their... Uh, their um you know live show or yeah live show, streaming show that they're doing so can't wait yeah, i can't wait um, either i know it's great and so uh, what's up next i think i'm just gonna put up masio's um after party video if I okay, so wait, that. Michael and Packer say that their show is coming saturday yes on youtube yeah on youtube and, so um, Marston and Brunt Art Studio, I think, is their YouTube channel. Yep. But I could be wrong. Yep. Um, that's it. Yeah, but I think that's it. Um, and, check yeah. their website as well. Yeah. And so uh, now you can go to bed and listen to some music. Um, yeah. By DJ I can't Masio. wait. Thanks for bringing me in live. Is literally as soon as I washed off all of my makeup. Hello, world. I timed it that way. Here I am. <laughs> This is and, art. This is the art of going to bed with well, your makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> turn on your music. Turn it up. Get a drink. 
Can't you don't wait. have to look at the screen. This is DJ Masio, and uh, he is just going to play some music to put us to sleep. So Great. thank you, everybody, Great. for I'll be coming. Dancing. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, I'll groove. Be Get your groove on. Have a drink. Go to bed. Yes, Enjoy. I have my wine. It's in the bathroom where I was just washing my face. So it's wine okay. o'clock. So. <laughs> exactly. And if you hear some barking, it's just Cheers. pinky. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for putting on another amazing art crawl. What Yay. a great lineup. That was so fun. So everybody <laughs> join up. We're going to do it live next time in April, I think. And we're going to make sure that it's all live. So and if you have a great artist, send them our way. Exactly. As long as they're in LA. Right. <laughs> Ish. Okay. Whatever. They just have to have a connection to the LA art community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Enjoy. Here Cheers. we go. Thanks for joining. Yay. Okay, Pinky Back. It's the art crawl after party. Thanks, Holly. Hit it, Masio. I hope you can it'll work. Let's see. Oh, no, it's not going to work. All right. Sorry, you guys. Uh, this is it. DJ Masi will have to go on the YouTube or the Instagram live. That feed didn't work either. So, yeah, sorry. Enjoy and good night. Yay, Dennis Art Crow. Thanks, everyone. Bye.